right, all right, all right. How's everybody doing today? Boy, what a pleasure it is. Thank you so much, Morehouse, for inviting me to come here and speak. Let me tell you, when I was a, a young guy, you would just hear about Morehouse and the mystique behind it. So to be here speaking is kind of a cool thing for me. Um, I'm Rob Hardy, and I'm from a small town called Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and I went to a uh, school not too far from here called Florida and m University. And, um, it was in those two places that I got my start. I'm a filmmaker, I'm a writer, I'm a director, I'm a producer, I'm a business owner. I was inspired to do that by another innovator. A few years ago, uh, when I was in high school, I saw a movie shot around a place similar to this about some students that look similar to me pledging an organization called G5G. That was Fight These Movie School Days. And I remember going to visit my dad, who lived in Nashville, and he told me, hey, there's, there's this filmmaker named Spike Lee that's going to be at Fisk University, he's going to be talking about that movie that you just saw. That was my first time seeing somebody that looked like me making a movie. Before then, when I would go to the movies and do things, I just said, man, that's great entertainment. That was the first time that I saw somebody that I could identify with, and I saw then how this same innovative filmmaker would turn around and do commercials, or would turn around and do music videos, or would turn around and sell his own clothes, and do things to market himself as a brand before I even knew what a brand was. All I knew was that there was this new cool guy that I could relate to that had gold chains and hung out with Michael Jordan and wore, wore Nikes, and I said, man, I want to be like that. What I realized about people that are trailblazers and innovators is that they're beacons of light that allow us all to see something different. The cool thing about innovation is that it's got everything to do with who you are, with your own personal individual experience, and how you can use that to make something better. It's not reinventing the wheel, it's just making that wheel turn a little bit faster and a little bit more smoothly. So with that being said, um, I wanted to be a filmmaker. Where I grew up in Philly, there were no filmmakers that we knew of. When I was growing up, I knew people did a lot of things, but filmmaking, entertainment, was not one of them. I remember having this conversation with my dad, I said, Dad, I want to be a filmmaker. And he said, you know, son, how many filmmakers do you know? How many filmmakers do we hang out with? That sounds like a scam, son, and you might be living on my couch, so find another option. <laughs> Needless to say, I have a degree in mechanical engineering. Very different. But my thought process was this. Maybe if I major in engineering, engineering can get me into special effects. Special effects can get me into movies. Now, I'm just going to tell you, the two are totally unrelated, but that's what I was thinking about when I was in high school. <laughs> I had a friend of mine that was uh, in my neighborhood. He had a video camera. I didn't have one. He shot something uh, for fun, and we saw it. And that was the first time I said, wow, there's somebody with a video camera that I can reach out and touch. There's somebody around me that I can do something like. So I asked him if I could borrow what he had, and we shot some stuff in our neighborhood. Some people saw it, and they said, man, that was cool. You should do that again. So the next month, we did something like that again, and we were doing music videos back then, and we pressed play on the tape, and we pressed pause, and pressed pause on the, on the camcorder, and we didn't know how to edit, and we kept doing that until we had this little music video that we were doing. Back then, it was a, this group, De La Soul, Date Myself. Um, needless to say, the technology of, 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 that was available to me, we used it. And we turned around and did something that we were passionate about. It had nothing to do with getting paid, <clears throat> had nothing to do with balling, had nothing to do with being famous or being known. It was born out of passion. I heard Tavis Smiley once say, if you can find something that you would do for free and do it well, then you can find somebody to pay you for it. Tavis Smiley said, I like to talk. I like to know things, I like to research things, I like to talk, I like to debate, and now he gets paid to do it on radio and on TV. Interestingly enough, when I got this camcorder in my hand and I had no formal training 
and I went out and shot something, then people around me said, man, you're pretty good at that. You should do that. That was the first time that I was able to go from saying I want to be a filmmaker to I am a filmmaker because I had done something to demonstrate what I'm claiming that I want to be. And it had nothing to do with who I knew, because I didn't have any connections. It had nothing to do with how much money I had, because I didn't have any money. It had nothing to do with how well I looked or how cool I dressed, and I thought I was pretty cool at the time, and I still do, but it had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with what was in here and what was up here. What I found out about that journey of becoming a filmmaker is sometimes when you tip that domino, or when you throw that pebble into the water, and those ripples carry and carry and carry, it affects everybody around you. So people started coming to me and they said, hey Rob, now, now I'm at FAMU. Hey Rob, I heard that you did this movie thing in high school. You know, I've always wanted to do wardrobe. I've always wanted to act. I've always wanted to do marketing. I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to do that. And so what we did was we said, hey, why don't we take what you do and what you do and what you do and we'll put it all together and we'll make something that we call Chocolate City. It gave us an opportunity for all of us to live our dreams and all of us to pursue our dreams at the same time at a school that had no film program. At a school that had never done a motion picture before, we were able to go and do a movie. That's where I met my business partner, uh, Will Patton. In that process of doing something for fun that we enjoy, we put it out in theaters and people pay us for it. I'm thinking, wow, are you crazy? You're actually paying us? to make this movie that we do for free, that birthed our career. That was the first time that my dad came to me and said, wow, maybe there's a real career in this. Being an innovator is creating a space where there isn't one. It's figuring out a way to say, this is what everybody else is doing, but how do I bring that closer to people so that way they can identify with it? There are tools that we can use that are around us that allow us to do that. Tools like the internet. When we moved to Atlanta and we got ready to do our first independent feature, it was this movie called Twat. And we said, wow, you know, we're filmmakers. We've been in Jonesboro, Georgia, which is where we were at the time, starving for two years. And let me tell you, that sounds a whole lot more glamorous than it is. <laughs> so we had an assortment of day jobs while we try to pursue our filmmaking. So we you know, done construction and work for vacuum cleaner companies and so on and so forth. But we had this idea because of technology. Everybody now is shooting on these high def HD cameras. So all we need is a little bit of money and we can shoot an independent movie. So we started raising money and raising money and raising money. And by the time we finished, we had gotten a lot of money to shoot our movie. Well, the innovation comes in the fact that there's this brand new vehicle for us called the internet. And we happened to go to a school where we knew a lot of people, namely FAMU. So we call our friends and say, hey, forward this to some of your friends, forward this to some of your friends. And I knew somebody that went to Morehouse, somebody that went to Spelman, somebody went to a &T. And before you know it, there's this grassroots network of people talking about our little movie. We didn't have much money to promote on television, but we knew people. We used technology to be innovative for ourselves, and it wound up making our film very successful, and we got to deal with the studios. Sony Pictures was like, well, how did you guys go and make a bunch of money in the theaters without dealing with us? And it was a matter of the fact that we were able to sit back, invest the time and resources in ourselves to say, how do we make this work? The funny thing about being an entrepreneur, especially when you come out of college, my thought is this. Many of us, when we're in school, don't have a lot of money. We don't have a lot of resources. But we figure out ways to do what we want to do. We figure out ways to dress nicely, to get a nice stereo in your car, to go on a date, to do those things. But we don't seem to find ways to invest money and time in ourselves. What if when you came out and you gave yourself five years, okay? Give yourself about five years to figure out what you can really do and how you can really make that dream and that goal work. When I was in school and we formed our company, Rainforest Films, I was going to and from engineering classes, and I was in, I'm still in, I was the president of my Alpha chapter at that time, 
And so we always had these business ideas and things that we were doing on the side, but we kind of felt like, man, if I could make five more calls, we have the deal today. If I could make 20 more visits, then we have a million dollars to shoot our movie today. Well, let me tell you, when we decided to not get corporate jobs and to go into business for ourselves, all those ideas that we had, we used up in the first week. <laughs> all those calls, all those faxes, all those visits in the first week, and nothing happened. The illusion before us, because we were so busy as students, was that it's right there for us, it's right there for us, and we just had the time, but we gave ourselves the time. That was just the start. The real magic came when we had to figure out a way to make this career path pay our bills every month. That's when we start thinking about, well, what really makes money and what really makes sense versus what just looks glamorous and sounds cool. So then for us it was wedding videos, commercials, free work, anything that we can do, ah, we're gonna sell our first movie, Chocolate City, on a 1-800 number, and we're gonna get these discounted trips to the Bahamas to give away. So people will call our 1-800 hotline and say, hey, let me, let me get that free trip. Say, no, it's, it's a movie, yeah. I don't care about the movie, I just want the trip. Those are things that you do to figure out how you can make money, but that was teaching us about distribution. You talk about uh, scenarios that happen. There's so many times when we were trying to make things happen for ourselves and we'd have these setbacks. Or so many times when somebody would offer us a deal and the deal would fall apart and we'd say, man, is this, does any of this stuff make sense? All those things set you up for a bigger payoff later. You know, we see these actors or these uh, stars like Charlie Sheen, and he talks about winning. It sounds crazy, but winning is a real state of mind. If you get up and you expect to win, if you expect that every scenario is going to ultimately be the stage for you to come back and win the Super Bowl, you're going to win. You look at a guy like MC Hammer. When I was in high school, MC Hammer was a huge, huge rapper, made $30 million, and he was hanging out with Deion Sanders, who has a big entourage, makes all this money, and owes it all to the IRS and loses fortune. We laugh about MC Hammer, we see him on the reality show, he's doing the Pizza Hut commercials with Spike Lee, another innovator. MC Hammer goes back and says, man, what do I really want to do? What do I really enjoy? Technology. MC Hammer today is one of the most successful technological innovators in our country. He designs apps for Apple and IBM. He hangs out in Silicon Valley, and he just goes to all the headquarters selling new applications that he and his team develop. Doesn't sound flashy. You're not gonna see him in an ad with a bottle of liquor advertising it, but he's living his dream and he's walking in his purpose. Each one of us have something creative inside of us, something that we see that only we can do. And it's up to us to figure out how to show other people what that is that can inspire them to do the same. I have a friend of mine that went to uh, Georgia Tech and he liked to hang out with a social butterfly and he says, man, you know, every time people come in town, they always call me and say, hey, Larry, what's going on in town? So he puts together this service called the Lowdown that basically gives you the lowdown on all the spots in the Atlanta metro area, whether it's jazz, a restaurant, the movies, or the theater. And it's not just for the quote unquote urban audience, it's for everybody. It did so well, we moved to, to Chicago and to LA. And now they're developing an application based upon that. That's innovative. Because when people come to town, they wanna to know what's going on, but you hear about their service, and then he finds a way to make it work for him and live his dream, and now he can go and like to have a smile instead of talking, he can go hang out in cool spots and see you and I there, and he's now the resident expert. Innovative. In a room just like where we are right now. The difference between people that love their careers and like their jobs are the people that are willing to take a risk on themselves and to be innovative. I've been around long enough to know that at the end of the day, having a financially successful career is cool. 
But once you can pay all your bills and have a little bit of extra money to get your hair done and go on a trip, then it becomes about something more. Like how do you feel about what you do? Are you excited? Do other people around you get excited when you talk about what it is that you're doing? Doesn't have to be movies. Doesn't have to be applications. Doesn't have to be the lowdown. It just has to be something that you can do and that you can offer that helps inspire other people. That's the great thing about being entrepreneurs because when you do that, you instill that philosophy in all the people that work around you and that inspires them to go out and do the same thing. Taking them back to Spike Lee. Now that I work in entertainment, and I've been in this business for over 16 years, I know a few people. When I go back and look at older Spike Lee movies, and I look in those credits, I see so many names of titans in my industry that I know. What that says to me is that this visionary filmmaker, this Morehouse man, had the audacity to go out and inspire other people that years later can go out and continue that same legacy of inspiration and employment. That is the great thing and the great gift that we have to offer. That's the great thing and the great opportunity that we have at, in being in places like this. The best time for you to start is right now. The best time for you to start is when you're in school and you're trying to figure out how to make your mail order business happen. How to make your lawn care service happen with one house for free. To then getting citywide contracts. To then figuring out how to do that on a state basis for you know parks and recreation. Those are all things that are innovative that I guarantee you if you ask many of your parents how you do that, they couldn't tell you because what they know of is Go to school, get a job. And that's cool, but what if you go to school and you create a job? Or what if you go to school and you create 20 jobs and use those 20 jobs to inspire 40 people to go out and create even more jobs? And then you're on a committee and the President of the United States, be it President Barack Obama or somebody else, is asking you, how do we save our economy? Young innovator, please tell me. And in the process of inspiring people, then you have money to help donate for other people, or you do products that make people feel happy or forget about the problems, and you did that. Whether you're buying a, a McDonald's franchise, or whether you're franchising your own dentistry, or whether you're making your own clothes, or franchising your own beauty salon, those are all things that you and I can do. It's not really about the limelight, which is cool. It's about the light that's inside of you and here. We have a new movie coming out, like they mentioned, Act like a lady, think like a man. Comes out April 20th, that's my plug. But I will tell you this, you talk about innovators, look at Steve Harvey. He's a guy that is a comedian and wrote a book. Because on his radio station, so many people called into him and were asking him about relationship advice. And Steve Harvey's thinking, man, man, you know, I've been married three times. <laughs> I have now become the resident expert on the marital situation. And I have this platform. And he uses advice, he uses power for good to help other people. And that turned into a nationwide best-selling book, which turned into his second book on the New York Times list, which turned into a motion picture about that book. And that, was, that all had to do with his personal experiences that he went through. Painful, real, honest experiences that he was able to turn into something that could make somebody else feel better. And what happened? We paid him for it. That, my friends, is innovation. That, my friends, is what you and I have the power to do in whatever median that is. That, my friends, is what you and I are obligated to do because that was placed in us for a reason. And no one can take that from you. You don't have to look a certain way, talk a certain way, know certain people. You just have to operate in your lane, give yourself a plan, and have the faith to continue to fight and reinvent yourself within that space and be dedicated to it. And I look forward to coming back and seeing some of your handsome faces standing up here, talking about how you are helping to reshape the world 
with that same positive perspective. Thank you all so much.